So, so what is that stopping point? Well, it turns out that the stopping point is established by first reducing size. So we're going to reduce the size from three to two first. Then as we move down, we will stop having grabbed the last item and moved it up. And then we won't go off the end of the list because we have reduced our size correctly uh, beforehand. If we leave the size alone, um, which I had mistakenly done on the code that I gave you first, uh, then what would happen is we would go down one too many, or I should say if the list was full, we would actually reach out of the end of the array, and we don't want to do that. So uh, what we continually want to do is to stay inside the bounds. The code that I had had a slight off by one error. Uh, we don't want that. Um, so what we need to do is make sure that we reduce our size first. Then as we're moving down, bumping everything up, we will stop at the appropriate time. So what does that mean over here? It means that our algorithm is as follows. We validate our position. Then we reduce our size first. This shortens the list by one, which is what we want to do. And then as we roll up, I'm sorry, as we move down, shifting everything up, when we hit the new size, we will stop. And this will prevent us from grabbing one extra item at the end. So we reduce our size, right? After that, we shift everything, every element below position up one spot. All right, that's the technique that we're going to use. So let me switch to our um, to the uh, developing environment that is uh, NetBeans, and we can see that I'm ready to do my remove at. So let me go ahead and start typing. Now remember that our remove at, of course, is going to be public. It, it's going to be usable by anybody, of course, and we want it to be non-static. We want it to run on a uh, on an object and not on the class. And as I did with the insert at, I'm going to cause it to return a boolean. This is going to be uh, allow us to say whether or not we want uh, whether or not uh, it worked. Uh, without talking to the user. Remember, we're talking to the programmer, not the user. And uh, we're just going to call it remove at. And in this case, all I'm going to take is the position. We're going to remove the element at that position. Um, we don't care what it is. And so I'm going to start off with my validation. And I'm going to make sure that position less than zero is not allowed. Any negative position is not in the array, so it's immediately uh, not allowed. And then I'm also going to check any position that is greater than or equal to size. Those are also invalid. I cannot remove an element from position size because that's not in the list. And anything greater than size is also not in the list. Now, one thing I'd like to point out about this, it's very important, is that if the list is empty, then this Boolean expression will prevent any insert from occurring uh, because no insert will be allowed because there will not be any valid position. If the list is empty, then size is equal to zero. So if size is equal to zero and somebody gives us a negative position, 
well, the negative position is going to generate a false result automatically. But if size is equal to zero, then any position that's not negative will either be zero or greater than zero. So if the list is empty and the size is zero, no position will get past this Boolean expression because they can't. There are no valid positions. So I never need to check to see if the list is empty because checking for valid positions does that for me, which is really nice. Um, now, after this, I want to immediately reduce the size. Um, here's the deal. If the uh, list has one element in it, then when I reduce the size, that element's gone. Uh, it's still in the array, but it's not in the list. Uh, likewise, if I'm ever removing from the end of the list, by reducing the size, I simply uh, reduce the uh, number of elements in the list, and the bottom one is now not there. It's not in the list. It's still there, but not in the list. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and return true here to get NetBeans to stop telling me that I need to do that. And uh, now I'm going to write a loop that does this part that shifts everything up one. And so I'm going to start with int i set equal to position. Okay. And this will start at the location that I want to eliminate. And in order to eliminate it, I'm going to get the item below it and move it up. So I want to continue with this so long as i is greater than size. That means I have not reached the end of the list. By shrinking size by one, I make sure that I'm not grabbing anything outside of the list. If I was at my old size, um, minus one and grabbed something, then I would grab data that was no longer in the list. Uh, so I don't want to do that. So I want to stop if uh, I is, uh, um, I'm sorry, I want to continue as long as I is less than size. The moment it reaches size, I want to stop. And then I want to increment I. I want to just keep going. Uh, as long as i is uh, less than size. And every time i is less than size, I want r at i to be set equal to r at i plus 1. Because I have not yet reached my new size, I know that the item below me is going to still be in the list, so I need to move it up. And the fun thing about this is once I'm done with this, I'm done with the method. So I validate my position right here. I reduce the size of the list by one. This takes the bottom element off of the list temporarily. Then I move down, starting at position, going all the way to my new size, and I grab the element below where I am and move it into where I am. And if I do this all the way till the, my new size, then I will shift everything up correctly. And then I'll return true because I'll be done. And that's how the remove at does its work. Um, so that's the end of the coding part of this example. Uh, so like I said before, once we're done with this, we're going to have this part of the array still there, but its elements will no longer be in the list, so we're not concerned with that. Now, in order to test this, I want to go back to my share screen here, and I have a little driver set up 
to do some testing here. And uh, here's what the driver does. It instantiates a new array list. It populates it with 10 random integers between uh, 0 and 99. It then prints that list. And then I just do this until I feel like quitting. That's why I put while true, just to give myself an infinite loop. And I pick a position, and then I remove it, and then I print the result, the list, uh, with that item either removed or not removed, depending on whether my position was valid. So let's go ahead and run this. And then uh, bring it up. Um, it didn't print anything, so that's bad. So this is failing to insert, which is annoying me. So I will pause this recording until I figure out what the heck's wrong. All right, I figured out what went wrong. I had used uh, these parameters backwards in my ArrayList class. So I reversed them and put them in the order that I want. And now when I run this program, it has generated the 10 uh, numbers that I was talking about and it printed the list and now I can type a position to eliminate and let's just start with position zero here the 76 should go away if I do that and it is nice uh, if I type a negative one that should be out of bounds it shouldn't work and if I type a nine there are ten in here I removed one there are eight left uh, or nine left, so that should be indices zero to eight. So when I do position nine, it shouldn't work, it didn't work. 55 is right out, negative anything is right out. So I've got valid positions now of indexes zero to six. Let's do, or zero to, uh, to eight. Let's do eight and eliminate the 56 at the end. And so there it went. And now I can eliminate, uh, Position five, which will get what? This is what, zero, one, two, three, four, five. This should get rid of the 75. And uh, there it goes. So if I do position two, it should get rid of the 30. Position one should get rid of the 82. Position five should get rid of the 40. Position, or uh, sorry, position four, because there are five of them. Uh, position uh, four now should no longer work. Uh, position zero. Position two should get rid of the 13, and I'm just knocking them out here. And then finally, when I get to the end, no number should work because there are no valid indices, because it's empty. All right, and so that's uh, an example of how the remove at uh, method can be written. And uh, I apologize for getting the size minus minus in the wrong place first. That was a, a, just a, an off by one error made by Mr. Klein. I continually talk about how easy off by one errors are to make and how even experienced programmers make them. Case in point, I just made one and it was a silly mistake. Putting the size minus minus uh, after the for loop uh, will cause an error. What will happen is if the list happens to be full, when you remove, you'll go all the way to the end of the list and you'll try to move the item that's uh, out of the list up one. And that happens rarely. It only happens when the list is full. And uh, that's why I didn't discover it right away. I did a, did a more robust test and discovered that and, and I corrected it. That's how, that's how programming works. All right, so I'll stop the share. And hopefully now you understand how to remove at in an array-based list. And uh, we'll see you next time.